This is the Sport Fishing Championship. And this is day two of a three-day event, the 20th annual Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic. We're wrapping up this second day from our perspective. Uh, these fans out there looking from far, far away into the Gulf of Mexico, they've still got more sunbathing to do. Robbie Floyd and Peter Miller here, aka, what? Should I call you Peter Moore or Ronnie Moore Peter Miller? I, I mess that up every time. It's up to you. How are you? <laughs> we'll join Ronnie in a little bit. He's probably out on the golf course, but look at the points we have right now. Quantified is leaps and bounds ahead of most of the field. A work of art is just that. They are a work of art. They're the only ones really hanging on. They are, they are hanging on, and Quantified is doing exactly what they've done all season. They dip into everything. They get the blues, the whites, and the sails, and they're very consistent. They are the team to watch out for in every event. This morning, uh, we saw the board light up. Again, yesterday, we even saw the board light up. It was quantified with that first catch of the day on day number one. Um, that was worth an extra 100 points for the Blue Marlin. Um, but then as the day progressed uh, today, things just kept building, and we see quantified. And when they catch one, it seems like they catch two within about an hour, hour and a half time. Frame. They are definitely in fish-rich waters. That's exactly right, Robbie. I mean, the bite is pretty consistent for them. They're in that area where they found the fish, and they're going to stay there. They're going to stick with their game plan like we always talk about. We're going to weigh up through the Thursday as well as Friday catches throughout the day. Looking at it this morning, releasing a Blue Marlin. Uh, all in, real fire, Rebecca. Um, that's how you want to do it. Day two, kind of get on that that wave, trying to keep things progressing through the day because day two is it, it's cut day. I mean, you've got to do it today because you're going to have a limited day the, tomorrow. It's really hard to start out on top like Quantify did, where they got the blue marlin with the extra hundred points, which is critical, and then they follow up with all these fish today. I mean, that is a it's a tough position to be in, but they're holding on strong. Looking at our, our venue here. Now, of course, we take off from Miramar or Destin, Florida, but look at what they have to work with. And looking into the water there, the dark sections on those shelves, those are steeper drops. Some of these guys stand towards Mississippi Canyon, where no, it's not quite as deep, but a lot of, you know, different terrain, like potholes underneath the water. A lot stuff. of contour, like that bathymetric type chart. You know, it's very important to fish the types of water that you feel comfortable in. And when you know how to fish like an atoll or you know how to fish a certain area, you know, it, it's really, you know, that's the key, Robbie. That's the key. You want to fish an area that you're familiar with. You have to be on Hilton Navigator, so constantly updating and seeing what, you know, is out there as far as these current movements. I know that uh, Ronnie has also talked about the moon phase, and we see that. You know, you always know in fishing, the fish seem to bite at certain times. Is it the moon that's drawing? Because we know it affects the tides, but also the current as well. I, I definitely believe in that, Robbie, and, and it's, it's important to follow that moon phase. We've always done that. You know, there's days where it doesn't pan out exactly like you thought, but the, the moon has such a gravitational pull. You know, it's all about the tides. It's all about the current. It's all about that pull in and out, and you have to be able to try to focus on those factors, and then you can capitalize on that fishing, and that's exactly what Quantified has done. Let's talk about today and how we've been building up. Southern Charm, one of the teams to look for because they were the only one, or they were the one closest to Mon Cherie, who's not only leading the Gulf, but leading the overall SFC pitcher. Again, they're trying to build throughout the season. We take their best three event points, their catch points keep tallying up, but Southern Charm's definitely one to watch. They're always hanging in there, Robbie. Southern Charm, you know, they've got a Blue Marlin in this tournament. They're sitting second overall in the Gulf Division. You know, they're always there. You see their, their squid chains out there. They're pulling those teasers through that weed. Tricky to pull lures and baits through weed, but that's where the fish are going to be, so you have to get in there. Captain Landon keeping the, keeping them straight back in Venice. I think what they call four blues, then Orange Beach, a couple of blues, and a single uh, at Biloxi. But again, they're kind of heading that wrong direction. They need to keep building from today. Uh, again, trying to get those arms ready. They had to fight a blue marlin. They had one. Uh, it was upcoming. They just didn't know how soon it would be. Robbie, it's not uncommon to get a little shoulder injury from catching that many fish. <laughs> one year, I, I called it sailfish elbow. People say tennis elbow. I had sailfish elbow where it actually impinged on my nerves, so that's a good problem to have. You have a t tennis elbow or a shoulder problem from fishing, yeah, that means you caught a lot of fish, and that's exactly what Southern Charm's done. I know you didn't just sit there and complain about your fishing elbow. It's oh, almost like, my poor elbow. Oh, it's killing me. I can't stand it. And uh, again, it, it, these are like winches. We do see light line at some of our events and light tackle, but these are some big boys, some big beasts. The Blue Marlins, uh, 600 pounders, not uncommon in these waters. Not at all. These guys hook up with big fish. I mean, they're feeding them 
10 to 20 pound tunas and they're gobbling them down like popcorn like we talk about. But here as you see, they're using kid gloves, if you will. They're bringing them in in rubber, rubber coated nets. They're wearing bibs so they don't take the slime off the fish. Then they're just plopping them right into the tuna tubes and they pull them out and deploy them. Look at this, even this is helper taking his bib off. This is a great setup these guys got, dropping a live bait over, big oh, circle oh, oh, hook in there. Oh, we didn't see this. We did not that's see this. Okay. This did not happen. This Listen, did not happen. If there's any time it's going to happen, that's the time you want it to happen when nothing's <laughs> happening. Absolutely. This team out of Orange Beach, Alabama, Southern Charm, a 63-foot Hatteras. I see Texas on his back. Is that, that might be a Texas boy on board. You know, I'm from Texas. I there's mean, a, you from Jersey? I'm yeah. from Jersey. Listen, they have a lot of guys from Texas that, that are fishing this tournament. Yeah. Guess where Quantify is from? Yeah. Texas. Yeah, these guys know these guys fish. You see this fish coming up, Robbie? His bill's coming out of the water. They can't really see the fish that well when they have to come up and eat it over the top like that. They're trying to guide it down their bill into their mouth. Now the captain up top spots his fish and he's telling them in, 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 or whatever, because you, you don't want to get too close to the teaser. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. It's not as easy as it may, they may make it look. Exactly. Sometimes they need to bring that bait up to the fish because the fish is past it. So they may drop it to him, they may reel it in, bring it closer so it catches his attention. Or, you know, the captain's going to say, hey, drop it back. He's swimming away. We want to drop it back. Maybe he wants to look like it's wounded because he swatted at him once and you want to see him fall back and then they'll go after it. In Southern Charm, uh, th there's several opportunities that, that didn't didn't happen. I mean, the, the one that got away, this is a perfect example. We've seen it before. Uh, one of our top teams, Bandito, looked like they had it online and get away. But those that you can see, you know, it's one thing. Those that you can't see is another. But uh, we did see Southern Charm get one on board. Uh, well, it actually didn't even pull it on board. But we were fighting it. And this was Grant Davis doing this in that fighting chair. We didn't always see the fighting chair being used at all of our SFC. That's right. It depends on the uh, size of the fish. depends on what type of fishing you're doing. Obviously, they have big baits. They're looking for big fish, and that's why you have that big gear. You want to be able to close that gap as quickly as possible, and using this type of equipment is what you want. Look at the thickness of the tip of this rod and the guides and everything that they're doing. Look at this thing. It's like a telephone pole. And his forearms. I mean, he's got a fight on his hands. He might as well use those big pythons. I wouldn't want to arm wrestle him. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Grant, listen, Grant Davis you're not getting board. tennis. You're not getting sailfish elbow on this. You're getting blue marlin elbow. Mackenzie Davis on board, Ron Davis, Tara Davis, Hogaboom, Connor McLeod, Chase Richardson, captained by Landon Bell. That's what you want to see right there. I mean, that is beautiful. That's what we all come here for. That's why we're here sitting talking about it. That's why these guys are doing it. And that's why fishing is a $138 billion industry worldwide annually. That's, that's right, $138 billion. Ooh, that's a lot of money. It that sure was by Chris Rock. It yeah, sure is. is. How much for one rib? <laughs> A lot of oohs and ahs. It's a beautiful fish. That is a big fish. That's a solid fish. And this is something that'll help move them up in the Gulf Division point totals. Because remember, after this event, we only have one more Gulf event. And that's in Texas uh, down the road just before we go to Puerto Rico. This could be a $100,000 fish. you got to look at it every single time. This could be the one that wins you the Gulf in an extra $100,000. This fish is absolutely gorgeous. It's majestic. It's powerful. And it moves with like such skill. You see those big tail wags. He's trying to get away, and they're about to leader this fish. Texas shirt going in hot with big hands getting on that leader right below the double line. And once they do that, when they do that hand wrap, they are on to the leader. That would be a qualified catch. They have the video as well. And we are done. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We got it done, man. I mean, golly, we lost the fish earlier. Perfect, you know, beautiful, perfect bite. Everything happened perfect. We just didn't get a hook in them. Came back with a bait. That fish was down at 300 feet. Dropped the bait on its nose. It came from 300 to 20 feet in like five seconds. Just inhaled it. Everything was right. Got tight. Fish hardly fought at all until right there at the end. It was fun. Put on a show right behind the boat. Got her done, got the release. On to the next one. I'm not supposed to say got her done, you're supposed to say get her done. He, well, he got no, her he done. Got, he actually yeah. got her done. <laughs> and uh, that, is a, uh, that is an adrenaline blaster right there. His heart is pounding a million miles an hour because when that fish doesn't jump the whole fight and it starts at the very end, that's intense.
Look at those blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, when you take off from Destin, I mean, it is the Emerald Coast, but uh, it is unbelievable the uh, scenery that we have here. Send Destin with the golf resort. They had a golf tournament earlier in the week, part of this event as well. And look at that. See ya at 1043 this morning when we left the air. See ya was able to catch a blue marlin and release a blue marlin. Because also, Peter, we talk about the catch and release. All of the SFC events are catch and release events. But another thing is about the conservation. That's why you catch and release to be caught another day. It's also about learning about the things in the water, on shore, and that's why the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation is so important. We actually caught up with them as they went to a kid's art camp earlier this week. Hey guys, I'm Harley, Harley Van Heining, AKA Gnarly Harley with Gnarly Fish Prints. I'm here at the ECBC in Sandestin, Florida and uh, working with the Sport Fishing Championship and also the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation. Today we're doing a kids camp, which is all about uh, education and uh, painting fish, which is what I love to do and uh, love working with the kids to educate them and uh, keep our fisheries going strong in the future and also creative minds, uh, keep them creating. I come from an extensive art background with my mother being an artist. Uh, she went to the Royal Academy in Central London and so I've grown up and been around art my whole life. Uh, never once thought I'd be an artist. So uh, how it came about, I started experimenting with the art form, knew about an art history classes, I uh, got obsessed and was painting every fish that I caught, my friend's fish. And then someone was like, hey man, uh, you know, are they any of these for sale? And then, and then uh, here we are. I'm born and raised here locally to the Destin area. And growing up here, I grew up fishing and the fishery here is pretty strong. We have lots of different species at different times of the year. The inshore fishing is amazing. We have clear emerald green water and uh, there's not a better, I think a better place to fish and sight fish in the country, to be honest, other than maybe the Keys. But uh, it's beautiful here and um, I love fishing here. Um, love the home. I've um, uh, basically that's uh, supported everything I do, uh, being the luckiest fishing village in the world. SFC coverage of the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic is sponsored by Sea Home Watches, by Smith Optics, and by Fish Razor Tournament Grade Tackle. Whether you like to ride the wind, find your secret cove, Reel them in. Plot your paradise with GPS Map Series from Garmin. Yeah, baby! That's what I'm talking about! Sport fishing anglers from around the world competing for $1 million, the Sport Fishing Championship on CBS Sports Network. Remember, everything begins in the morning. Every story told is a fisherman's tale. We build watches tough enough to be a part of that tale. The perfect balance of beauty and brawn. We are Seaholm. Watches that last a lifetime. Seaholm Automatic, the official timepiece of the Sport Fishing Championship. Largest in water boat show in the world, the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. More than 3 million square feet, fishing boats to super yachts, engines, accessories, learning experiences, and culinary delights. Save the dates, October 26th through 30th. Details at flibs.com. It all 
all comes back to the water. This binding agent, this fluid history of connection, past, present, and future, all tied together through this never-ending, unwavering force. We belong to a community of seekers, anglers, and everyone in between. For us, it's more than fishing, much more. It's who we are, who we were, and who we aspire to be. We are Smith. SFC coverage of the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic is sponsored by Sword Fishing Products, by Publix, and by Yugo. Gale Force Twins here. We are in Jackson, Florida for the ECBC Tournament with the Sport Fishing Championship. We're with Captain Allen from the High Cotton. The boat behind us is a 92-foot Viking, one of the biggest boats in this tournament. And what I want to do is show you guys some very unique things with this boat. Beam is everything in a boat. This, this 92 has a 24-foot beam. And as you can see, the width of this salon and the length of this salon with a, with a full-time, uh, full-size dinette that leads into the, the galley is, is a wonderful option. Everything on this boat is basically full-size. You don't really feel like you're on a boat. So you have a full-size kitchen, full-size table. Standing in the master, you can see again how wide it is. And you were saying earlier that the master is essentially a full beam master, which means that the master bedroom is sitting in the widest part of the boat, which for a master bedroom sounds about logical. That is correct. And, and not only that, but it's also in the lowest part of the boat. So really it's the most comfortable room on this boat. I have to say my probably personal favorite part of this whole boat is the fact that your bridge is enclosed. I don't think I've seen any boat in this tournament with an enclosed bridge. Being climate controlled, uh, there's nothing like being on the inside, especially when it gets nasty outside. Uh, this is this is the place to be, and uh, it's it's huge as you can see. We have a TV over here we can pop up. All of our electronics in the front. Uh, it's it's really a comfortable place to be. It's just uh, a much better way to fish, I think, than the uh, open bridges. And I did see you guys have a tower, so you do have a second station up there. That is correct. So if it's if it's calm enough, I can go up there. It's extremely high up there. It gives me a, a visibility that's that's unbelievable. And uh, I do a lot of fishing up there. We can see our, our bites come. Uh, it's a great place to be. Well, I'm kind of scared of heights. I don't think I can be on that top deck. I don't think I can make that, but I mean, they're not schlepping on that boat at all. No, they are not on a 92-foot Viking, and they were last year's champ, Robbie. They they had a big, big blue marlin, yes. just a 700 pounds. That is a beast of a boat and a beast of a man and a beast of a fish. Yeah, we had Mon Cherie, hey, our championship points leader with a catch today at 145. Mon Cherie, and now, didn't we hear also that uh, the, the, the angler that we usually see, Damon Schwest, not on board, I think it was Devon, Laurent that able to catch that blue marlin on Mon Cherie. But yeah, a 681 pound blue marlin was the biggest fish caught last year in this tournament. Again, the Sport Fishing Championship is all about catch and release, and there's been nobody catching and releasing more billfish than quantified. So the Texas team still gets to head to Texas at the next stop, but they are killing it here in Florida. They sure are. I mean, with eight billfish under their belt thus far, I mean, that's that's going to be really hard to catch up to them. They have two blue marlin, four whites, and two sails, and they are in the fish as always. And they have that, you know, broad demographic of fish, if you will. They're getting all species. They're getting everybody. They're picking them all day long. And look where they are. They're top of the leaderboard again. Yeah, we expect a day two to be a busy day, and that's exactly the case here. Let's go on site with site one. Ronnie, uh-oh, the breeze is starting to pick up. That 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 shirt's starting to ruffle a little bit. Ronnie, don't tell me you brought the rain today. Is, is it okay? No, I, I didn't bring the rain, Robbie, but I, I am bringing some winds. Every evening, it seems, in Florida, you have those same thunderstorms that come through. It obviously has not hurt the fishing negatively out there in the Gulf. You guys were talking about a team quantified putting on a clinic today, and I talked to Captain Justin Drummond at the meeting. He kept it short. He kept it brief. I said, are you going to do your same game plan? And he said, Ronnie, I'm always going to do my same game plan. I just don't know how it's going to work out. This week, guys, it's working out better than anyone else, and honestly, it's working out better 
better than any tournament we've seen so far other than Moncherry in Louisiana. 5,600 points for Moncherry there. This one's approaching 5,000, and I, they're not done yet. I'd expect another catch or two from Quantified and to add to their catch points uh, tomorrow or this evening. Hey, Ronnie, and looking at those catch points, I mean, right now Quantified has 1,450 points. You look at Moncherie, about 350. They made up 1,100. They were 2,200 behind. They cut that deficit in half, and those catch points keep adding on. You also have to look at it from the event standpoint. If they get a win here, they've got two wins. I mean, they're going to be hard to beat, especially when we go to their home waters. How are they getting this success all of a sudden starting to come in droves? Well, you just took the words right out of my mouth. They not only would have their second win of the four event golf season so far, but now they're going to South Padre Island for the Texas event, exactly where Justin is from. The one thing about Quantified, they're cool with being the different team. They're cool with the ones targeting the white marlin, targeting the sailfish. But this week, the X factor for them, we saw them win the Masters event out of Gulf Shores with only uh, basically sailfish. I think they added one blue or one white was their their last fish catch and release. But for these guys, they have put in multiple uh, blue marlin this week. They have a double grand slam, as Matt Klosterman was telling me. Not only do they have a blue, a white, and a sail, but they have two of those, at least, of those three species. So they're cool with being different than everyone else. And I saw a team like Southern Charm, other teams that say, hey, we've got to kind of mix in a little bit of that flair that Quantified is bringing if we expect to keep pace, because at a certain point, those blue marlin territories are going to get overpopulated with boats and you're going to have an opportunity is going to be lesser for a blue marlin spot to yourself so you got to be a little bit diversified like team quantified if you want to be at the top of the leaderboard hey ronnie are the guys fishing closer it seems like they might have put lines in a lot earlier than they did in the previous tournament what's the word on that well, you guys see we had that noon takeoff, which is the latest takeoff that we've had of any tournament this season. Normally they're like 10, 10.30, 11 o'clock, so a little bit later, but we saw some earlier catches than we've seen all week. So I'd expect Team Quantified maybe to be a little bit more inshore, like the Gale Force Twins were saying earlier in the day. Some of these teams that are doing well, they are going to be a little bit closer inshore. I also know from a lot of the teams, the Mississippi River, the way that freshwater was pushing out and kind of pushing some of that blue water, it dispersed a little Little bit there was a couple pockets that have popped up but some of that main blue water area that these guys want to be at is a really long distance away so some of these people need to run the rips where the where the water uh, meshes together where the weed lines form so some of these teams that do stay closer like quantified not saying for sure quantified to stay closer but they've done it a little different I'm assuming with how quick they got started catching that first blue marlin that they were closer and hey guys this will be the first team to catch the first blue marlin and get bonus points this year and maybe even pull off the victory we've seen them come up just oh. short you did Quantified not just jinx them. You did knock not on, just jinx them, Ronnie. You knock know how these. Wood. You know how these anglers are. Do you are. see you the points lead they have? They are. They are killing it. <laughs> You're exactly right. Now, I'm sure none of these anglers on board Quantified are uh, superstitious at all. Hey, on site with Site One. Thank you, Ronnie. Awesome job as always. Hey, let's do it again in the morning for uh, SportFishingChampionship.com as well as CBS Sports. Again, tomorrow we'll be on CBS Sports at 10 a.m. till noon Eastern and. Championship fish, these are fish that we actually bring in, Peter. Um, we can weigh these in. We've got some bigs throughout the year in both the Mahi Mahi, the Yellowfin Tuna by Invisible Boats, as well as Wahoo. That's right, and the Mahi Mahi is at about 40 pounds. And you know, that's not a big fish. And the Wahoo, as we know, was caught in the DR. That's a 74 pound Wahoo. And what's her name? Maricela Echevarria. Nobody can say that better than you, Robbie. Corrales Thank you the, for that. What's the boat she was on? Again, that was a, a massive white marlin tournament. I mean, white, 100, what, 102, 107 white marlin caught at that event. But the Mahi Mahi, the Gulf is known for that. I mean, there's big bigs out there. You call that a bull, right? That's a that bull is dolphin. a bull. That's a male dolphin squared off head like that. And there's a plant, there's a lot of much more bigger bull dolphin out there. I'm surprised that they haven't seen anything bigger than a 40 pounder, but I'm sure it's in our near future. But you know this one right here, the yellow fin by Invincible Boats, a 206 pounder caught by Second Wind and Ronnie Moore caught up with them at the docks to talk about that catch and it was one of their biggest they've ever caught. We've set the mark, the SFC Invincible Boats Yellowfin Tuna. We're on Team Second Wind with the owner, Mitch, and the angler, Drew. You guys caught the biggest Yellowfin Tuna, 206 pounds. Tell me about it a little bit. 
and it was uh, the first afternoon, and literally we hadn't been fishing too long. Just got baits out probably 30 minutes of where we were at the rig we were fishing, and got the bite. Probably fought him 45 minutes or so. Got him up, and Jason, the other mate on the leader, he looked at it and said, it's a big one, and he's seen plenty of big ones in his day. And when I see, he said that, we knew, all right, it's going to be a good one. Drew is a very seasoned angler, so he definitely knows how to reel in fish. And when we saw this fish really giving him a hard time, we said, it's got to be a good one. And uh, we were really elated when it when it came up. And, and we saw it, it was like when he came in the boat, it was like, wow, you know, it's the biggest one we've ever caught as a team together and it's in my lifetime. And, and it definitely, is, you know, it's definitely something we're going to work towards trying to top, but I mean, we're happy with it for now and very happy with the outcome. It's obviously good when there's 180, 190 pound yellowfins coming in and it doesn't touch what y'all did. You broke the record for the Mississippi event. Y'all will definitely get the prize pool for that fish, but you also are in the running. Now set the bar for that $50,000 sport fishing championship bonus at the end of the year for the Invincible Boats Yellowfin Tuna. A lot of money for just about 45 minutes of work. That's right. Yeah, we're excited. Hopefully it holds. Team's second wind, the biggest yellowfin tuna at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Billfish Classic. Well, you know, he said he's good at reeling them in, and reeling them in is a technique. It's not like he stands there and just winches it in. You have to do short pumps and gather that line up powerfully, and you have to do it stealthily, and you have to be strong while you're doing it, but you don't want to give up all your energy, and you don't expend everything you have on that fish. So he did it, did it in 45 minutes. That's an incredible catch. Well done. A work of art, man. That's a piece of work right there. Don't know who caught it, but I think it was either Christian, Art, Lance, or Wes, but Jason Buck has put them on the fish almost back to back there a couple of a blue marlin as well as a white marlin so you get 350 points for the blue another 125 and that's going to move that team up the leaderboard as we take a look the sport fishing championship here at the emerald coast blue marlin classic the guy harvey ocean foundation is honored to be the official charity of the sports fishing championship through this partnership and the support of donors like you future generations will enjoy and benefit from a naturally balanced ocean ecosystem. Our education programs, both in the classroom and online, bring to life the work needed to make sure we have clean oceans for decades to come. Join us today at www.ghof.org. Sometimes saying no can be really difficult. It's hard to set boundaries to give yourself space and time. Up water means never having to choose between having fun or missing out. A sparkling hop water full of flavor and packed with new boosting benefits that's non-alcoholic with no calories, no carbs, and no sugar. So go out there and get up to no good. Sport fishing anglers from around the world competing for $1 million. The Sport Fishing Championship on CBS Sports Network. Excited to wake up for a 4 a.m. fishing trip as you were when you were a kid. It means winning three World Sailfish Championships. It means you know what you need and what you don't. Being serious means seeking out the ultimate fishing machine, which is what Peter Miller has found in the unmatched handling, speed, and comfort of an invincible. It's the simple things, like spending a day at the beach, splashing in the water, playing in the sand, and creating sandcastle masterpieces. Rediscover fun and family on the beautiful white sand beaches of Gulf Shores and Orange Beach. SFC coverage of the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic is sponsored by Invincible Boats. 
by Gulf Shores and Orange Beach Tourism. And by Salt Life. Twins here. We are in Destin, Florida for the ECBC fishing tournament and it is a very hot day. So a great thing to do when it's really hot in Destin, Florida is head to the Destin History and Fishing Museum. We are with Vivian, the associate director. So Vivian, we know this museum has been here since 2005, but we want to know what makes this place special to you? I actually grew up in this area, so I'm from Fort Walton Beach, which is just across the bay, and we've loved coming to Destin. We have white sands and beautiful beaches, and of course, fishing. And earlier you were giving us a little bit of the history of Destin, and Destin started as a tiny little fishing town, and it's grown drastically. So can you tell our viewers how this place got started? Yes, so in 1835, Leonard Destin sailed in and was like, you know what, this kind of looks like a good spot for a fish camp. And he didn't know how lucky he really was, because Destin is one of the best fishing spots in the world. So he started a fish camp here and started collecting people to come fishing with him. And the next thing we know, we have Destin. That's an awesome story. And I do have a question for you. The white sand is very unique, and you said that's one of your favorite pieces. Mm -hmm. So how about we head over to that white sand piece in this museum and talk a little bit about that. Sounds good. We made it over to the white sand exhibit and we were learning that this sand actually comes from the Appalachian Mountains, is that correct? It is. So can you explain to us how that has happened? It's not imported, it came here naturally. Yes. So back in the day, what we like to call the Ice Age, glaciers and mountains were moving through North America. And a couple of them happened to be moving through the Appalachian Mountains, which is predominantly quartz. So it picked up that rock and ground it up all the way down here and deposited it on our beaches. So we have several miles worth of white sand. So our sand is 98% quartz, which is from that Appalachian Mountains. Right, and with that sand being 98% quartz, it is going to be cold to the touch, no matter how hot it is outside, mm -hmm. but it's also extremely reflective. So yes. you can sunburn very easily here. You've got the sun, you've got the water, and the quartz sand, sand. making it very easy for a sunburn. So the people in Destin like to say, wear sunscreen every hour on the hour. Hey, Peter Miller, I saw the history on her shirt just a second ago, but I had no idea that that sand was brought from the Appalachian Mountains for the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic. Absolutely breathtaking, beautiful spot. And I've actually visited that museum on my show Bass to Billfish with a young fan, and we spent a lot of time there, and he was absolutely blown away by it. Great place to take the kids. Learn some stuff. Here's the Billfish Championship points as we come into this event. Mon Cherie on top as far as the Sport Fishing Championship is concerned. All the way down there at the bottom, Donia Lucy. We'll see them hopefully in the Atlantic as it kicks off at our next round. But these these top eight uh, or top nine teams, every one of them has one event that they probably could have done a little better at, and they're looking to drop because we only count three event points. Those catch points they'll add up throughout the season. Even if you go to an Atlantic event, those catch points will add up. But there's some event points that they're looking to drop. That's right. It's kind of like a do-over. You know, you have a bad one, you get to drop it. It's kind of like, forgive me, I have not done well. <laughs> Please uh, say a couple of Hail, Hail Marys. We'll see you at the next one. Yeah, even Mont Cherie with a win. A sixth place or still a ninth in their mix that they're looking to get rid of. And they might just do it here. Mont Cherie, one of the teams to look for. Now let's take a look ahead with Smith Optics. Where are we heading next, Peter? We are going to Jersey, and it's going to be phenomenal. In the Atlantic here, we're finally getting to it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey, Cape May, um, Cape May, Montauk, Martha's Vineyard going to be uh, three back to back to back weekends for our, our Atlantic division. But Cape May, I mean, what's that movie that was up in this? I believe it was Jaws. Yes, we're not looking for Jaws. We're looking for billfish, and there are big billfish to be had. They there sure are, and there's a lot of big sharks out there too. They <laughs> love eating those seals. You get up, you get up there, and there's big bluefin tuna. It's a quite a vibrant fishery. Um, not, not as vibrant as that teak. I, I was right about there. to bring Woo. up the teak as well. That's some pretty woodwork on those boats. But again, a different cast of characters we'll be seeing. Maybe we'll see some of those guys that fished down in Florida uh, when we were at St. Augustine. Massive along the Upper East Coast 
a massive blue marlin. Over a thousand pounds they've caught in some of these areas. Yeah, they sure have. And the Gulf has done the same. I'm not trying to take away from the Atlantic, but the Gulf has also seen 900, close to 1,000 pounders in their tournament. So uh, you know, it's going to be a it's going to be a serious event. Speaking of the Gulf, let's take a look at the map. They take off from Destin or Miramar, Florida, and for the most part, our group hanging around in these certain areas, Mississippi Canyon, uh, DeSoto. There uh, looks like Bandito could be generally the furthest away. For all that run that you have to go out, you still have to come in. Have to be across what is it, the uh, Destin Pass Bridge by six o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That's right, and and you, you definitely need to be seen. It has to be within eye shot. If your radio is not working or someone's stepping on you, you just have to be seen, which makes it a little more comfortable for the guys coming in. If there's a long line of boats. We do want to point that out. Everything we say is officially unofficial. Sometimes we'll have catches, and it, they may be duplicates. But cold motion doing well. Uh, catch one uh, this afternoon, but look at quantified a couple there. Rebecca cold motion, a new name we haven't seen. They're catching them this afternoon as we build towards our final day tomorrow. And uh, cold motion was it Ryan Easterling put them on, and it was Brooks Delaney, the angler on that 60 foot case. Robbie, I've done some math here. I'm not good in math, but I'll tell you what, there's 24 billfish caught thus far in the tournament that we've heard of. And you know how many quantified has throughout all their tournaments? 24. We got a 24 24 lineup. Yeah, I also looked at Rebecca, John Ramming, uh, Captain Hunter Forms uh, caught it on Raise It Up, uh, Raise Them Up, another big billfish. So again, Destin, we're far from over. This is day two. We still have day three tomorrow. Join us in the morning on sportfishingchampionship.com and then on CBS Sports shortly thereafter. A day out on the water could go great. Or it could have a few minor setbacks. Things could get rough. Or you could lose that $900 smartphone. Whatever the problem, Hugo provides unmatched premium protection for any water sports adventure. Hugo. To get yours, visit hugoware.com or simply scan the QR code on the screen. And remember, just add water. Some call it joie de vie, the joy of life. In Louisiana, it's our way of life. From music that shakes up your senses to food that wakes up your palate. That joy vibrates in every note we play and spices up every meal we serve. So come live life to the fullest. Come one, come y'all, come feed your soul in Louisiana. I'm Sean Ardway inviting you to plan your trip at louisianatravel.com. So, if you want this, but you can't have it without this, or this, or this. Until now, introducing a new way to travel, intranationally. Get all that international charm without ever leaving the country. Right here in St. Augustine, Bonavitra. Get all that culture. All the cuisine from that culture. You're welcome. All the gram-worthy sights from that hashtag culture. It's right here at home. St. Augustine, Bonavitra. Travel intranationally. Get it, slip it, cuff it, check it. High blood pressure silently affects millions of Americans. Staying on top of your blood pressure is as simple as these four easy steps. Self-monitoring is power. Visit manageyourbp.org to learn more. When it comes to performance, comfort, and functionality, we've got you covered. Performance apparel designed by anglers to make your time on the water better than ever. Salt Life, the official apparel sponsor of the Sport Fishing Championship.